To say that the Wano arc has been full of shocking reveals would be an understatement. However, when we go back and examine what details Oda had left behind, should we really have been surprised at all? Hello my Nakamatachi, this is Joy Girl, and as much of the fandom, or at least those who are caught up, speculate on a new mystery recently posed in the manga, today we will be discussing other major twists which we have seen so far in the Wano arc, and some foreshadowing details which should have alerted us to these reveals. As we know, One Piece is a series where details, as minuscule as they may seem, almost always have greater meaning and significance, which will often come to play at a much later point in the story. Oda frequently seeds plot developments well before they eventuate, and we're talking whole arcs, meaning years in advance. And we will be discussing some examples of these setups as this video is an examination of some of the foreshadowing details behind some of the greatest twists and moments in the Wano arc, which Oda included well before their payoffs. Before we begin, I should warn anime only fans that we will be discussing some reveals which haven't yet been animated, but I will be providing you with spoiler warnings so please feel free to continue watching and just skip ahead when necessary. And with that being said, starting our discussion with a reveal that has been animated. The true identity of Komura Saki. Komura Saki's double identity was perhaps a reveal that didn't really surprise many fans. The fact that the Oiran was actually Hiyori in disguise was pretty easy to guess with all things considered. However, until confirmed by Oda, all speculations remain just that, no matter how likely they seem. With the crazy stunts that Oda is known to pull, we are to expect the unexpected and there is always a chance that we will see something completely different to what was anticipated. That was not the case in this occasion however, and Komurasaki was indeed revealed to be Hiyori. And aside from all the circumstantial speculative details, such as the introduction of a female character who seemed to be around the same age that Hiyori would be, and the focus on this Oiran suggesting that she would be a pivotal character to the story, Oda had also included a hidden detail hinting at the Oiran's real identity which could be found in her name. Komurasaki translated to English means small purple, and in Japanese, the Oiran's name refers to purple beauty berry, a type of garden tree which fruits violet or purple berry clusters. While Oda strayed away from his usual convention of naming female characters after birds on this occasion, the meaning behind Komurasaki is still significant. Apart from the obvious connection between the famed beauty of the Oiran and that of the fruits, it seems to have been a hint to Komurasaki's true identity as Hiyori. Purple is a colour that has historically been related to the royal family across many cultures, including Japan. Due to the difficulty and the amount of resources which was required to produce this rich colour, purple was traditionally worn by the royal family and other nobility. Furthermore, the violet hue, which makes up the Murasaki in the Oiran's name, is also connected to samurais in Japan, symbolising strength. It is said that the only flower that was able to be presented to samurais was the iris, a purple flower with sharp leaves which were reminiscent of the katanas of warriors. This meaning behind the colour purple seems to have been a hint of the Oiran's noble heritage as the granddaughter of the former shogun of Wano as well as her samurai father Odin, arguably the greatest warrior the country has ever seen. Moving on to a much more recent reveal, and one which came to more of a shock than Komurasaki's identity, but before we get into this, I will have to warn anime-only fans to skip ahead to the time shown on the screen, as we will be discussing some manga-only content for a while. Now for everyone else, perhaps the biggest reveal that we have recently seen is that of Kaido's Devil Fruit. The nature of Kaido's dragon form had been a mystery which was the source for much speculation. From simple theories such as a mythical dragon fruit, to much more left field ideas such as the existence of a new Oni race. The actual answer? Revealing Kaido to have the Ua Ua no Mi, model Seiryu, came to the shock of the majority of fans, but in retrospect, this fact had been dangled in front of us all along. Kaido's fish based devil fruit, which grants him the ability to turn into a dragon, seems to have been hinted to us in many ways. 
from a few key details in his appearance, such as his fish-like scale design across his upper body, as well as his long Fu Manchu moustache, which seems to have been a nod to the whisker-like barbells found on Koi Cups, Kaido's laugh, Worororo, when spelt out in kanji, the first two characters are read as Uo, like the devil fruit, rather than Wo. And his birthday, as revealed to be the 1st of May, which fun fact is the date on which Kaido's anime debut took place, an even funner fact, this day also corresponds to Koi Day, a celebration in Japan established by the National Carp Raising Promotion Council. And whilst it's understandable that non-Japanese reading fans would likely miss the foreshadowing shown through Kaido's laugh, and you would have had to have access to the data book One Piece Blue Deep or the SBS Volume 79 to catch the connection to his birthday. There may be another foreshadowing detail which Oda included in the series itself, which occurred as early as chapter 731. Escaping the Colosseum in Dressrosa using animal disguises, Kinemon comments to Luffy and Zoro that he especially finds the koi fish disguise cool. This small, comical, and seemingly meaningless line seems to have had deeper significance likely hinting at another koi fish we would come to see much later on in the story, and one which Kinemon would not consider cool. Knowing Chapter 731 was released in 2013, and the One Piece data book even earlier in 2012, that means Oda had set up these foreshadowing details over 8 years before its reveal. Talk about the long game. Moving on to another major reveal which had several hints throughout the series, but one which we could have connected straight away, Kanjuro the Traitor. The speculations to uncover the traitor within the scabbards resulted in practically each of Odin's retainers coming into the firing line at one point or another. And whilst there was a lot of circumstantial evidence throughout events in the series which made it seem highly likely that Kanjuro was the informer, what with his various suspicious actions such as when he randomly covered Kinemon's eyes as they were climbing up Zunisha to stop him from seeing the minx, fans were still not confident that Kanjuro was certainly the traitor. However, it seems Oda dropped many foreshadowing details to hint at this fact. In the same way that Komurasaki's name could have given away her identity, if written in kanji, Kanjuro's name could be read to contain the Japanese word for suspicious making his name Suspicious Juro. Furthermore, Kanjuro's epithet could also be seen to have been a clue as his epithet, Evening Shower, seems connected to Sun Showers, translated to Kitsune no Yomeiri, which in Japanese folklore implies deception, as rain during sunny weather was thought to be the result of a fox's trickery. I've made a video before discussing how much nuance and details non-Japanese speaking fans are missing out on and it seems we continue to find more examples as we delve into further examination of the series. But even without understanding the Japanese language, it seems that there were other hints to give this mystery away. For example, in the Viva cards for new characters introduced in Dressrosa, Kanjuro was actually divided into the enemy pack, not the allies which is a pretty dead giveaway, but again, not a detail that fans who didn't have access to this sort of external merchandise would have been able to catch. However, Oda did include more details which would allow any fan reading the series to connect the dots, and that is through the mangaka's tendency to base elements in his series of historical and cultural inspirations, Kanjuro seems to be based on Yamada Emosaku a Japanese man part of the Shimabara Rebellion during the Edo period. Emosaku was a secret informant of the Shogun and foiled the rebels' plans to overthrow the monarch. And whilst this connection may only have been possible in retrospect once Kanjuro's treacherous nature was revealed, this historical parallel could have actually been made before the reveal because Emosaku was a painter, just like Kanjuro. And sticking with real life inspirations, another detail which could have alerted us straight away is Kanjuro's designs. Kanjuro's pale white face and his long red hair is the classic appearance of kabuki actors, or the renjishi dance in particular. 
The fact that Kanjuro looked and often displayed the dramatic behaviors of a kabuki actor was a big hint that Oda embedded into Kanjuro's character. Foreshadowing his nature as an actor who has been faking his emotions and fealty to Odin and the rest of the scabbards all along. It seems that with Kanjuro, his true nature had been truly hidden in plain sight, and one which was given to us from the very first moment we laid eyes on his character. On to the next reveal, this time by way of cover pages. In another video, I have discussed how Oda is a unique mangaka who uses cover stories as a way to further develop his story, which at times can be used to foreshadow future events. This method to foreshadow future reveals isn't limited to just cover stories however, and even color spreads may be the source of hints. It seems Oda may have used this method of foreshadowing on more than one occasion with Zoro's character arc within Wano. Seeing Zoro again at Wano after a whole arc without him at Whole Cake Island left fans hungry for the Straw Hat Swordsman and his badass action scenes. And a question which often pops up amongst the fanbase is, who will Zoro fight next? Whilst this question isn't exclusive to Zoro, as one of the Straw Hat's main combatants, it is indeed a major element of intrigue and excitement surrounding his character. Wano has been a marvelous arc for Zoro and his fans so far, as we have been granted some truly glorious action-packed moments that we have been so dearly missing. One of his greatest feats was against Kamazo the Manslayer, who was later revealed to be fellow Worst Generation member, Killer. The Straw Hat Swordsman delivered an epic defeat to the Assassin and was able to do so whilst fighting against two opponents at once. After having his shoulder pierced with a scythe whilst he was distracted with Kukimaru, the Swordsman not only tanked this attack, but then used Kamazo's own weapon against him to strike him down. And whilst I could continue gushing about this awesome fight and Toei's fantastic job in animating this scene, the focus for this discussion is how Oda may have actually foretold us of Zoro's impending fight scene a few chapters prior. Eight chapters before the one containing Zoro's matchup, the color spread in chapter 929 features the swordsman wielding a scythe, possibly hinting at not only his next opponent, but also a weapon which he would use. What's even more interesting is that in the same chapter where we witnessed his battle against Kamazo, there was another color spread which may have contained a hint for Zoro's further developments. This time, Zoro is seen looking at a treasure map containing the drawing of a sword. Given Zoro's sword fanaticism, whilst this in itself may not raise any eyebrows, there are further details provided on this map. In addition to the picture of a sword, the kanji character's Enma can also be seen. This bit of detail was shown to us before we even knew that Enma existed as Oda only introduced the famed sword in chapter 954, making this the second time that Oda used the color spreads to foreshadow future plot developments relating to the Straw Hat Swordsman. It seems the mangaka was dropping a clue about Zoro's side quest in the Wano arc which would lead him to Enma. Which leads us to another color spread also concerning Zoro, but mind you at this stage has yet to have paid off completely, so let's have some fun reading into details. Also, this discussion will contain some spoilers for anime only fans, so please do skip ahead. For everyone else, the color spread in chapter 992 featuring Zoro eating noodles out of a bowl designed with blue dragons seems it may be another possible hint for future events. Whilst we can't say that this necessarily confirms the idea that Zoro will kill Kaido, given Oda's track record with using color spreads to hint at future developments for Zoro, this detail does seem to at least suggest a future matchup between the Swordsman and the Yonko. And so, the foreshadowing could be even said to have played out already, as Zoro is one of the figures currently engaged in combat with Kaido, though we will have to wait to see whether this detail will have even further significance in the battle to come. Or maybe, being the cheeky mangaka he is, Oda has caught on to us catching on to his use of color spreads and just included this detail as a red herring. Perhaps what we will actually see is Zoro drink sake and eat Odin using Kaido's body as his bowl. 
And that brings us to the end of this video. If you enjoyed this examination of little details which we may have missed in the series, then please do subscribe because that is exactly the type of content this channel offers. And on that note, please check out some of my other videos for further examples, and please leave a comment below if you know of more Wano related reveals which had been foreshadowed prior to the event playing out. This is Joy Girl, and I'll see you again soon.